Welcome to the lesson Figures of Speech. After completing this lesson, you will be able to define and list figures of speech, identify figures of speech in given sentences. It's a lovely summer afternoon and Kaya and Sid are playing frisbee in the park. A wind is blowing through the trees. When Kaya hears the rustling of the leaves, she remarks that the trees are singing. Sid tells Kaya that trees do not sing. This is when Kaya says that she is using a figure of speech. Sid does not know what a figure of speech is. So Kaya decides to teach him about figures of speech. Come on, let us also learn along with Sid and Kaya. A figure of speech is a form of expression that deviates from the ordinary mode of speech in order to produce a powerful, pleasing or distinctive effect. It's a remarkable way of saying something and is used to add color to language. Figures of speech are not just employed by writers to stylize their work. They are also used in everyday life. Figures of speech can be divided into the following categories. Figures of speech based on resemblance, contrast, construction, association, indirect expression and sound. The figures of speech based on resemblance are simile, metaphor, allegory, personification and apostrophe. Let us take a look at similes. The word simile is derived from the Latin word similis which means like. Therefore, simile means likeness. A simile is a definite or direct expression of a likeness between two different objects or events. For example, he cried like a baby. The person's action of crying is compared to the crying of a baby. Similes may use an adjective or a verb in order to draw a comparison between two things. For example, he cried like a baby. The verb cried is used in the simile stated above. She was as white as snow. In this simile, the adjective white is used to compare a person's appearance to snow. Remember that similes use words such as like and as in order to make comparisons. A metaphor is another figure of speech based on resemblance. It is an implied simile. A metaphor doesn't employ words such as like and as. It presents the two objects of comparison as if they were one entity. For example, he was a shrew where business was concerned. The person's business sense is compared to a shrew in the above example. However, this comparison is not directly made. It is implied. A metaphor is said to be mixed when metaphors of different ideas are combined. We must avoid the usage of mixed metaphors. For example, one must not bite the hand that rocks the cradle. The metaphors bite the hand and rocks the cradle are mixed together. They convey two separate ideas. Other common examples of metaphors are a gleam of delight, give the cold shoulder, fan the flames, etc. Another figure of speech based on resemblance is the allegory. An allegory is an extended metaphor. It is a narrative that carries a second meaning in addition to its literal meaning. Allegories may use moral qualities or abstract ideas as characters of the narrative. 
The narrative itself may have a spiritual meaning. For example, Aesop's fables make use of animal characters and are allegorical in nature. Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels is an example of allegory on human nature. Personification is also a figure of speech based on resemblance. In personification, inanimate objects and abstract ideas are spoken of as though they are living and conscious. For example, the trees are singing. The trees are spoken of as though they are living. An apostrophe is a type of personification. It is a direct address to the dead, to the absent or to an inanimate object or event. For example, O oh love, that thou were fair. Here, love is directly addressed as though it were a person. Dearest John, if only you were alive. Here, the person John is addressed even though he is no longer living. The figures of speech based on contrast or difference are antithesis, oxymoron, epigram, pun and paradox. An antithesis is a striking opposition or contrast of words used in the same sentence for the sake of emphasis. For example, the monarch lived in luxury while the citizens suffered in poverty. The words monarch and citizens lived and suffered and luxury and poverty are antithetical in nature. An oxymoron is a special type of antithesis. It is a term that presents two contrasting qualities about one object such that one gains new insight about the concept as a whole. For example, he is the wisest fool yet. The term wisest fool is an oxymoron. An epigram is a brief pithy saying used in prose or poetry. It introduces antithetical ideas and often embodies a clever reflection. For example, the boy is the father of science. The word father is used to describe the boy. Thus, two antithetical ideas are introduced in this epigram. A pun is a word used in such a way that it is capable of more than one meaning. It is often used to create a humorous, satiric or surprising effect. For example, no matter how much you push the envelope, it will still be stationary. The phrase to push the envelope means to perform or go beyond set limits. In this sentence, the phrase to push the envelope also refers to the physical act of moving an envelope. At the same time, the word stationary is also a play on the word stationary or non-moving. Thus, a pun is a play on words in either terms of meaning or in terms of sounds. A paradox is a statement that appears to contradict itself. However, it provides a valuable or fresh insight into an idea or concept by the seeming use of contradiction. For example, change is the only thing that is constant. This statement is a paradox because the quality of being constant is assigned to the concept of change. Figures of speech based on construction are climax and anticlimax. The word climax means ladder in Greek. Climax is a figure of speech that involves the arrangement of ideas in an order of increasing importance. It leads up to something important or impressive. For example, he came, he saw, 
he conquered. The actions of coming, seeing and conquering are arranged in an order of increasing importance. Anticlimax or bathos is the opposite of a climax. It is the arrangement of ideas in an order of decreasing importance. It is a sudden descent from a higher level of importance to a lower level and is often used for the purpose of satire and ridicule. For example, John Smith funds companies, mansions and even public bathrooms. The various places that he funds are arranged in an order of decreasing importance. The statement is meant to be ridiculous in nature. Figures of speech based on association are as follows. Metonymy, synecdoche, transferred epithet and hyperbole. A metonymy is a figure of speech in which an attribute or quality associated with an object or person is used to replace the object itself. Let us read some examples. The kingdom has spoken. The word kingdom is a metonymy for the citizens or subjects of the kingdom. The kettle is boiling. Kettle is a metonymy for the water that it is holding. Have you read O. Henry? Here, O. Henry is used as a metonymy for the literary works written by the author. A synecdoche is quite similar to a metonymy. In a synecdoche, a part is used to designate the whole or a whole is used to designate the part. Let us look at some examples. He's got his fingers in every business deal in town. Fingers is a synecdoche and is used to refer to the person himself. Thus, it is a part that designates a whole. South Africa scored 250 runs. The country South Africa acts as a synecdoche for the South African cricket team. It is a whole that designates a part. In a transferred epithet, an epithet or qualifying adjective is transferred from its proper word to another word that is closely associated with it. For example, they have seen stormy days. The epithet stormy is actually associated with the experience of the people in this sentence. However, it is transferred to the noun days. A hyperbole is an exaggerated or extravagant statement. It is used for emphasis by making an overstatement. For example, if I hear any more music, I'll go deaf. The speaker will not really turn deaf because of the music. This statement is an exaggeration. Figures of speech based on indirect expression are euphemism, irony, litotes and rhetorical questions. Euphemism is a device used to express something unpleasant in a mild or gentle way. It is employed with a purpose to avoid giving offense. For example, the safe was cleaned completely. This means that the safe was robbed. Irony is a figure of speech in which the real meaning is the absolute opposite of what is literally conveyed. For example, with such quick speed do the soldiers fly. The speaker is being ironic. He actually means that the soldiers are moving very slowly. Litotes are used by a speaker to emphasize the magnitude of a statement by denying its opposite. An affirmation is conveyed by the negation of the opposite. For example, such an occurrence was not uncommon. Not uncommon is an example of litotes. It actually means very common. 
Rhetorical questions are statements in the form of questions. They are used for emphasis or dramatic effect and the answer is obvious. For example, does money grow on trees? This is a rhetorical question used for dramatic effect. Money does not really grow on trees. So the question is actually a statement. Figures of speech based on sound are onomatopoeia and alliteration. Onomatopoeia is a figure of speech by which the sound of words suggests or echoes a sense. It imitates the sounds associated with objects or actions. It occurs more often in poetry than prose. For example, the buzz of the bees overhead. The onomatopoeia buzz echoes the sound made by bees. Alliteration is the repetition of similar sounds or letters at the beginning of two or more words. For example, the green grass grew here. Green grass grew is an alliteration as similar sounds are repeated at the beginning of these words. Now that we have learnt about figures of speech, let us look at some more examples. Kaya has explained figures of speech to Sid. Let us revise the main points before the two of them resume playing frisbee. A figure of speech is a form of expression that deviates from the ordinary mode of speech in order to produce a powerful, pleasing or distinctive effect. Figures of speech are not just employed by writers to stylize their work. They are also used in everyday life. Figures of speech can be divided into the following categories. Figures of speech based on resemblance, contrast, construction, association, indirect expression and sound. The figures of speech based on resemblance are simile, metaphor, allegory, personification, and apostrophe. A simile is a definite or direct expression of a likeness between two different objects or events. Similes may use an adjective or a verb in order to draw a comparison between two things. Remember, similes use words such as like and as in order to make comparisons. A metaphor does not employ words such as like and as. It presents the two objects of comparison as if they were one entity. A metaphor is said to be mixed when metaphors of different ideas are combined. We must avoid the usage of mixed metaphors. An allegory is an extended metaphor. It is a narrative that carries a second meaning in addition to its literal meaning. Allegories may use moral qualities or abstract ideas as characters of the narrative. In a personification, inanimate objects and abstract ideas are spoken of as though they are living and conscious. An apostrophe is a type of personification. It is a direct address to the dead, to the absent or to an inanimate object or event. The figures of speech based on contrast or difference are antithesis, oxymoron, epigram, 
pun and paradox. An antithesis is a striking opposition or contrast of words used in the same sentence for the sake of emphasis. An oxymoron is a special type of antithesis. It is a term that presents two contrasting qualities about one object such that one gains new insight about the concept as a whole. An epigram is a brief pithy saying used in prose or poetry. It introduces antithetical ideas and often embodies a clever reflection. A pun is a word used in such a way that it is capable of more than one meaning. It is often used to create a humorous, satiric or surprising effect. A paradox is a statement that appears to contradict itself. However, it provides valuable or fresh insight into an idea or concept by the seeming use of contradiction. Figures of speech based on construction are climax and anticlimax. Climax is a figure of speech that involves the arrangement of ideas in an order of increasing importance. Anticlimax or bathos is the opposite of a climax. It is the arrangement of ideas in an order of decreasing importance. Figures of speech based on association are as follows. Metonymy, synecdoche, transferred epithet and hyperbole. A metonymy is a figure of speech in which an attribute or quality associated with an object or person is used to replace the object itself. A synecdoche is quite similar to a metonymy. In a synecdoche, a part is used to designate the whole or a whole is used to designate the part. In a transferred epithet, an epithet or qualifying adjective is transferred from its proper word to another word that is closely associated with it. A hyperbole is an exaggerated or extravagant statement. It is used for emphasis by making an overstatement. Figures of speech based on indirect expression are euphemism, irony, litotes and rhetorical questions. Euphemism is a device used to express something unpleasant in a mild or gentle way. Irony is a figure of speech in which the real meaning is the absolute opposite of what is literally conveyed. Litotes are used by a speaker to emphasize the magnitude of a statement by denying its opposite. Rhetorical questions are statements in the form of questions. Figures of speech based on sound are onomatopoeia and alliteration. Onomatopoeia is a figure of speech by which the sound of words suggests or echoes a sense. It imitates the sounds associated with objects or actions. It occurs more often in poetry than prose. Alliteration is a repetition of similar sounds or letters at the beginning of two or more words.